Hey there folks, uh, my name is Brock Chart and we are coming back at you with another pop tutorial. This one is called Backbeat and it's from Five Finger Pop Book 2. Uh, and a little background about the tune. Um, I love this this uh, style of music, this like kind of neo soul or kind of a flashback to uh, some of the really cool like horn stuff that was happening like in the 60s and 70s. Uh, there's a lot of more um, um, artists and bands that are kind of revisiting or reusing some of that material. Um, like Pharrell uh, with like his tune Happy. Uh, it, it kind of reminds me of that very like upbeat and fun uh, with some like cool horn lines. Uh, Silk Sonic, the band Silk Sonic is pretty new too. Um, and they're made up of two people, uh, Anderson Pock, which is just a, he's an incredible singer and writer and drummer. Uh, if you get a chance, check out his Tiny Desk concert on NPR. That's really cool. Um, and then Bruno Mars is also uh, the, the other founding father, father of that group. Just a very, very talented people. Um, and yeah, they, uh, you know, their, their stuff, it's, you know, it was made just a couple of years ago, but it, it, if you listen to it, you know, in the 70s, you wouldn't, it, it sounds completely like that time period, which I think is, is just really neat. But yeah, just very upbeat and hip and lots of cool, like, melodies and harmonies and uh, lots of cool, I don't know, background horn sections. And so I just, I, I love that sound. Um, and so, yeah, that's a little bit on that. And the actual name of the tune, like, what is a backbeat? So a backbeat refers to beats two and four. Um, and those are kind of the heartbeat of jazz music. Whenever you play jazz, your drummer is playing the hi-hat on beats two and four. That one, two, one, two, So that hi-hat there uh, is on the backbeat, you would say. That's on beats two and beat four. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, so in this tune, you're going to hear your left hand is really going to emphasize beat two. Uh, and then while your right hand is playing on beat four, um, you're the, 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 the drummer uh, on the play long track, you're going to really hear this one, two, th four, one, two, th four. So, yeah, that heavy emphasis on the backbeat. So let's go ahead and get started learning this. It starts out with a grace note right out of the gate. And so we're gonna have a two on this G sharp. That'll be the middle triplet there. And uh, just a quick refresh on grace notes. There's two ways that a lot of people like to do them. You can just play both at the exact same time and then lift up on the grace note like that. Or you can quickly go two, three. So uh, it they uh, pretty 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 much make the exact same sound. So you know, try both of those, see which one feels more natural to you, um, and yeah, it'll be great. So uh, something else to watch out for that shows up in almost every single measure in this is this rhythm: three and four, hold two, three and four, hold two. So this tied over and a four there, um, and so it's a little syncopated. Um, but that one, uh, that rhythm shows up almost every single bar in here. So just be aware of that. Some drumming exercises or counting out loud can be uh, can be good things. So let's try this right hand out. And there is, you know, this is a pickup measure. So you're going to count, give yourself two beats, and then you're going to come in on three. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. And then it's kind of the same uh, phrase there. Um, watch out after you do your initial thing. We're going to jump down to C with our thumb. And I'm going to have this kind of spread out two and three here. A two with my uh, D. And then I'm spreading out to a three with an F. Four, two. So that's kind of what's happening there in the right hand. A very smooth legato playing through there. The left hand is doing octaves, F, F, G, G, B, B. So uh, if your hand uh, is having trouble reaching a full octave or it feels a little uncomfortable, that's totally fine. Uh, you never have to play both of them at the same time. And so you can kind of do a rocking motion with your wrist uh, if, it's, if it's uncomfortable for you, almost like you're waving to somebody. So that's totally fine. You can kind of be bouncy and practice that, uh, that rocking motion there. Um, and so watch out for the dynamics, or I'm sorry, 
uh, excuse me, the articulations. So we have a tenuto marking on this first left hand note. And then the higher one is a staccato. Long, short, three, four. Long, short, three, four. Long, short. So that tenuto marking, uh, tenuto, I, I always think of it as like just hold it like a little, little longer than you normally would. Um, so this is that whole first phrase uh, with hands together. Remember, always give yourself a count for the first two beats. Um, whenever I'm practicing or like, you know, even playing with somebody else and I have a group of pickups, I'll give myself one full measure and then the pickup bars. So uh, whenever I count off for students or even myself when I'm practicing, uh, I'll go like this. I'll go one, two, three, four, one, two. But uh, for the, 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 the count yourself in, um, I, 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 I think that giving yourself a full bar, um, it really helps establish the tempo um, and make sure that you come in uh, really clear and in the groove immediately. Uh, if you give yourself too little notice, sometimes, you know, you don't really uh, fall into place with the groove or the rhythm until like you know, the second or third bar, but if you give yourself just that little bit more time, you can start to kind of feel the rhythm of the tune to where you're immediately into the groove just right from 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 uh, the get-go, which is good. Um, let's see, the next part would be pickups going into measure nine. This is kind of like the bridge, um, and so your right hand is going to be going up to a G with a thumb, and we're now doing like whole notes in the left hand here. Um, but your right hand rhythm is pretty much the exact same. All of those held over and of fours. So it's the same kind of rhythm over and over and over again, but we're just on different notes here. And so we're starting on this G, three and four, hold two. Now I have this grace note, like what we have in our intro pretty much. Now I'm going to go back to that kind of uh, like that very second measure there, that one, two, and I'm stretching. And then kind of back to that grace note. Oh, and then it kind of repeats that. So uh, you can also do some things that are called agogic accents in this. Agogic accent is a naturally occurring accent that happens because of the rhythm. Um, and so uh, in this tune, you're kind of automatically accenting those held over and of fours just because it's the rhythm is written that way. It feels natural to, to kind of highlight that note. You, it, you almost just do it out of instinct. And so that would be a great example uh, of the agogic accents. And so you can kind of hear that in measure nine, or I'm sorry, pickups in a measure nine. like a huge accent but I'm 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 just kind of doing it naturally but yes uh, we, we we would it's totally cool to to bring out those held over notes uh, and then yeah your left hand is just doing kind of whole notes here and then we have this long short so let me play that phrase for you this will be uh, pickups going into measure nine <laughs> This next part is one of my favorite parts of the tune. Right here in 15, uh, we do see kind of a different rhythm happening in that left hand. One, two, and three, and four, and. One, two, and three, and four, and. So a lot of offbeat stuff. And then something unusual happens in the measure 16. We see a 3-4 bar kind of out of the blue. And you're probably like, well, why, why, why is that there? Um, and that's a that's a good question. I don't know. I tried it as a four four, and it just uh, it just it just was too long. Uh, there was too much of a space there, so I made it into a three four. Uh, but it it kind of sounds cool. But that is is a 
is a tricky spot. So I would recommend, you know, definitely counting that out loud and just putting like measure 15, 16, 17 on loop and to where you can really go slow, practice in slow motion and count, especially that like mixed meter bar right there in 16. So let's try that together slowly. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, one. So, and that would be a good spot just to like kind of loop over and over again. I think it's valuable to start in the measure before, hit the measure you're having trouble with, and then a little after that. Is if you just focus on the one measure, you know, it, it doesn't give it any context. And so you got to build up to it a little bit and, and then get out of it. And so let's try that one more time. This will be 15, 16, and just the very first part of 17 there. So let's try that slowly, counting together. Ready? One and two and three. So yeah, so that could be kind of a tricky uh, thing to get in and out of, but just go slow and count and that'll be fine. Um, let's see, after that, it's kind of similar to what we saw at the very beginning. We do have a DSL coda, so be aware of that. That's a good thing to mark. Uh, we are going back to kind of that chorus, right? Pickups uh, going into measure nine. And then that'll lead to um, the end of that first page. We have a Tukota thing. And it's very similar to what we had in 15, but this one, we stay in four. So let's practice that. This will be, um, let's see, let's go in 21. <laughs> now we're going to take the DS. And here's nine. Right here in Coda, uh, it's kind of a, some, some, sometimes we would call it a tag ending. And a tag ending is just where we might repeat like uh, a phrase uh, usually three times um, is kind of the standard way to tag. And so this particular one, we're repeating something we had in 15. We're doing this one and two and three and four. And, and now we're adding more of like a solo fill after that uh, instead of, you know, our little 3-4 bar that we had in 16. So uh, it's almost like this is our band. <laughs> and then maybe this is like our saxophone player. And then we have our band coming in again. And then we have a little solo fill again. And then this is the same a uh, little lick, but it's an extension of it. And so we start to see a little bit different harmonies. This is measure 28. So, and that's the tune. Be careful there and like measure 29, those uh, that C sharp and some of those like and a four and a two rhythms can, uh, can kind of sneak up on you a little bit there. Um, and yeah, the very last two notes, those are accented there, and it's fortissimo, and this is just kind of a fun way to end the tune. So yeah, you very much want to like keep the groove going the whole time on this with good time. Um, this type of tune is all about the beat. It's supposed to be danced to, um, and having that good steady time is a really important part. So let's try that whole coda together. This two, three. <laughs> All right, that will, I think, wrap it up for Backbeat, but I appreciate you tuning in, and I hope this video helped you learn it, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.